Welcome to the Data Scientist Overview of Anaconda Enterprise 5. Over the next few minutes, you'll learn how to quickly build and deploy apps, machine learning models, notebooks, and REST APIs, as well as how to connect to external APIs, read from local data files, or connect to Hadoop or Spark clusters. So let's get started. Let's see how easy it is to deploy an application in Anaconda Enterprise 5. I click on an existing application, I go to the Deploy tab, and I click on Deploy. And now Anaconda Enterprise is going to go out download, install all of my dependencies, configure my environment, and then start my application for me. I don't have to do anything. In this case, I'll show you the application here in a second. We've got a little interactive dashboard. We've got some text, a video, you know, a chart that a user could work through. This is definitely a little more fun than just creating some Excel spreadsheets, maybe a PowerPoint deck, and emailing it to somebody. And again, I'm not writing any server-side code here to create this. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say I'm looking at some New York City taxi data and I want to represent it on a map. Well, I could use a library called Data Shader and I can build a little interactive application inside of Anaconda Enterprise 5. Now as a user, I can scroll in, I can look at the, the heat map here, I can move around. So in addition to making it easy for developers to publish and deploy applications to business users, developers can also easily work together. So in this scenario, we can build composable applications by one developer, one developer team building a REST API. So they're opening up an internal model, in this case, a model that predicts what, an, what animal an image represents. And another developer team can work with that model and build front-end code or user-facing applications so that you can easily share your code inside of one environment. So let's take a look at another bouquet application. So these are applications your developers can write, or data scientists inside of Anaconda Enterprise 5, that make it easy for end users to interact with your data. In this case, as they manipulate a chart, they can see an underlying data table, kind of in the middle of the screen, update based on their mouse interaction. But also what we're doing here is we're using a publicly available API to grab stock data. So just because your data doesn't exist within your organization, there's no restriction in Anaconda Enterprise that prevents you from accessing it wherever it may be. Anaconda Enterprise makes it really easy to deploy an application, but also to share that application and specify who exactly can use it. So in this scenario, let's say Daniel, the data scientist, has built an application to analyze some weather data, and he wants to add his boss, Chris, as a collaborator. Well, it's as easy as going to share, finding Chris's username, and then clicking share. Now, Chris can log into Anaconda Enterprise 5 from his end. He can now open up this application, and he can view and edit the application. He doesn't have access to the underlying log files because he's not the owner of the project, but he can he can manipulate it and you know use it to do his job. Now, meanwhile, if you want to remove a user, it's just as easy. You find their name, hit the checkbox, boom, they're gone. Now, Chris has been removed, so when he refreshes his screen, that project is no longer available to him. Now, let's walk through creating a project from scratch in Anaconda Enterprise. So we'll start with the Projects tab, and we'll create a new project. Give the project a name, and now we'll decide what kind of software we want to install in our project. In this case, we can choose minimal versions of Python or full distributions of Anaconda 2 or 3, R, Spark. We give you a lot of options. Now, behind the scenes, Anaconda Enterprise is going out and downloading all your dependencies, installing them, getting your environment ready to go. So there's nothing you have to do as a user. Now I can open up Jupyter Lab, and I have my Jupyter Lab environment ready to rock and roll with Anaconda 3, a minimal distribution installed. I can start writing code. I can start doing my data science work immediately. Here you see the Jupyter Lab interface. I can open up a notebook. I also have the options of opening up shells or consoles as well as text files. I can open up data, rearrange my editor, whatever makes my life easiest I can do inside of Jupyter Lab. So now let's show how easy it is to connect to Spark from Anaconda Enterprise. So I created a new notebook and installed PySpark. So now I have access to Python libraries and I have a Spark context to my cluster. Now I can initialize the Spark application here via a Spark context SC and I'll go ahead and connect to my cluster. And Anaconda Enterprise is handling all of this for you. The connection from this Jupyter Lab environment to the cluster is handled via Livy, an open source REST API. And then the actual installation of Anaconda is going to be handled on all of those data nodes for you, which means if your code works in your local environment, it will also work in your cluster. And this is really beneficial because we can now use libraries like Pandas and other, other Python libraries on the cluster, and we don't have to worry about them blowing up. The data scientists won't be responsible for any of that configuration and management. Their code is going to run on both local environments and on their cluster. 